and sun culture, among others. I'll now go to the itinerary. Uh, starting tomorrow in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, President uh, Ruto's visit will commence there. He'll visit the Qatar Presidential Library and Museum to emphasize the two countries' shared commitment to governance, democratic values, and anti-corruption efforts. His remarks there will underline uh, the importance uh, of um, democracies working collaboratively to tackle global challenges. The President will then visit Ebenezer Baptist Church to pay homage to the civil rights struggle and emphasize how religion can be a force for good. This visit will underscore the respect for historical struggles for equality and justice. The third area of engagement tomorrow, that is on Monday 20th, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, will focus on the U.S.-Kenya Health Partnership at the Center for Disease Control, CDC headquarters. Among key announcements will include the new CDC-Kemri Partnership, and more details, of course, will be shared uh, to that effect. The President and the First Lady will then be hosted by Kenya's strong diaspora in Atlanta. Uh, of course, we focus on the diaspora as a force multiplier in national transformation, as envisioned in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. On Tuesday, still in Atlanta, Georgia, the President commences his second day at Spelman College, where he will discuss the critical role of higher education, particularly science and technology in enhancing Kenya's human capital development, which is critical to attracting investment uh, that solidify Kenya as an appealing destination for tech jobs for both present and future needs. At Tyler Perry Studios, which he will also visit, President Ruto will explore opportunities uh, within the creative economy, highlighting it as a potential job creator and an area of robust partnership between Kenya and the United States. The President will then shift attention to trade and investment with a visit to Coca-Cola, where new investment partnerships will be announced. He will also then launch Vivo's inaugural store in America. That's a leading Kenyan retail fashion enterprise, showcasing the power of Kenyan women uh, entrepreneurs. Mayor Andre Dickens of Atlanta and the Atlanta CEO's Council will then host the president, uh, who will seek to position Kenya as an important regional manufacturing hub. Uh, after that, the president and the first lady will travel to Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, uh, May 22nd, arriving at, Saint and uh, sorry, at Andrews Air Force Base, where they will be officially received with full ceremonial state honors. The President will have extensive engagements at the Hill, where he'll meet a bipartisan congressional delegation under the chairmanship of the Speaker of the House, meet with the Black Congressional Caucus, and hold discussions with the bipartisan caucus of the Senate, led by Senator Schumer, uh, who's the majority, a leader there, and Senator McConnell, minority leader. In his meetings at the Hill, the President will apprise the legislators on the challenges faced by democracies on the continent and the urgent need for America's tangible and practical uh, engagement with the continent. He will brief the legislators on the dual crisis of climate change and conflicts in the region and Kenya's leadership in dealing with these challenges. In urging Congress to be cognizant of the need for African goods to continue accessing the U.S. markets on preferential basis, the President will implore Congress to extend the Africa Growth uh, and Opportunities Act, better known as AGOA. On Thursday, which is the main day of the President's state visit to the United States, the President and the First Lady will lay a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery to honor the sacrifices of American soldiers as well as historic figures such as Thurgood Marshall and John F. Kennedy who have had profound impacts on the history of Kenya. He will hold the main bilateral meetings with his host, President Biden, and delve deeper into Kenya-U.S. Uh, economic, health, and security partnership, and discuss regional developments on the continent, highlighting their fragilities and opportunities on the continent. Multilateral issues will equally feature in the talks, including uh, the multilateral development bank's reforms and Security Council reform uh, of the U.N., to enable the world cope with the evolving poly crisis of climate, debt, pandemics, and a multitude of security threats. The two leaders will then hold a joint press briefing at the White House after their bilateral talks. Uh, President Ruto will there thereafter deliver a keynote speech uh, on shared climate solutions at the Smithsonian, uh, discussing global environmental challenges and collaborative efforts uh, to address them. This is what he has been doing, of course, as you know, for the last one and a half, one and a half years as a champion of climate change and the, way, the best way to mitigate uh, climate change. So 
as a champion of climate action. Of course, he's also still the chair of CAHOSC. The day concludes with a state dinner on Thursday at the White House celebrating the enduring friendship between Kenya and the United States. Finally, on Friday, May 24th, the visit concludes with strategic engagements focusing on trade, investment, and digital cooperation. That includes a breakfast at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, where President Ruto will make the case for Kenya as a prime destination for U.S. investments. It will also hold a digital roundtable discussion hosted by uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, exploring the potential for expanding the U.S.-Kenya digital partnership. It will also pay a visit to the Pentagon, where the President will highlight Kenya-U.S. defense partnership in the fight against terrorism, extremism, and other emerging areas, uh, including cybersecurity. So that's a brief itinerary. Of course, there's a lot more, and they'll be announced uh, during the visit, and I'm sure you'll be following. Let me now uh, give some uh, time to the Principal Secretary to say a few words. Well, thank you very much, Hussein. I think uh, that captures uh, the breadth and length of the visit. I think really what is important is that this state visit um, signifies a deepening in the relationship between the United States and, and Kenya and the areas of partnership, particularly in the peace and security um, area, will, will be one of the major areas of focus. Aside from that, like Hussein has mentioned, there will be huge emphasis on trade and investment. And in particular in the area of trade, as you know, the AGOA framework that has facilitated commodities from the continent to access U.S. market quarter free and on preferential terms is lapsing next year. Uh, it is important that that framework be extended or be amended in a way that facilitates um, expansion um, 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 of, you know, of access uh, to the U.S. market by, by African uh, commodities. Um, again, I think just to mention um, the focus will be heavy in the area of diaspora. We are very committed as government uh, to expand diaspora remittance and diaspora's contribution uh, to our economy. Um, the, the, the enhancing diaspora's voice is critical to our engagement going forward, and the president will also spend time with uh, our diaspora. I think on that basis, perhaps we could entertain a few questions. Yes, please. Introduce yourself and your question. Hello, good morning. Thank you for this. My name is uh, Alban Tiroir, journalist for Radio France International. <clears throat> um, could you please tell us when the Kenyan policeman will be deployed to Haiti, if it's expected next week? And also, uh, some of our sources in Haiti told us that President Ruto might make a stop in Port-au-Prince. Is this confirmed or not? Thank well, you. as you know, the United Nations Security Council voted to establish the multinational security support mission to Haiti in November of last year. Um, that resolution of the UN Security Council, it's called Resolution 2699, uh, furthermore mandated Kenya to lead that mission. In the weeks or in the months that have followed, uh, Kenya has been in preparatory um, uh, mode, uh, preparing for this mission. Of course, there has been significant changes on the ground, not worthy amongst which was the, um, the termination of, of term um, of the former Prime Minister Oriol Henry of Haiti. Um, but subsequent to his exit of, of power, there has now been um, inaugurated a presidential council and a national security institution and several other institutions that have been put in place pursuant to an accord that was arrived at a few months ago. In view of that, and in view of the decision of the courts in our republic, essentially guiding how Kenya should be able to carry out this deployment, a bilateral um, reciprocal agreement uh, was entered into between Kenya and Haiti, which facilitates Kenya to be able to deploy. Um, and we are in the process, or government is in the process of finalizing uh, preparation to deploy um, I can tell you for sure that that deployment will happen in the next few, uh, few days, a uh, few weeks, but um, there is no chance at all for President Ruto to go down to Port-au-Prince, as has been alleged. Thank you very much. 
schedule. Yes, it's not in the schedule. All right. Next. Uh, PS, my name is Chazima from NTV. Now, the seventh review of Kenya's uh, program with the IMF has been going on for some six weeks now, which is unusually long. What are these issues that are sticky at the moment? And uh, are we expecting the president to meet uh, the IMF leadership in the USA? Thank you very much. Uh, we have, like you know, a very comprehensive program that is ongoing with the IMF. Um, the critical issues around um, our discussions with the IMF presently relates to tax measures um, and in particular with regard to revenue raising measures that the government is proposing. Um, of course you know that the finance bill is out in Parliament and it's going through uh, its, own, um, its own internal processes um, but but because of the complexity of all these issues around tax revenue, um, you know, it's taken quite a long time for there to be consensus and agreement between Kenya and the IMF moving forward. But with regard to the trip, um, the president will engage robustly uh, with President Biden with regard to the terms and conditions by which Africa accesses credit. One of the critical things facing the continent, including Kenya right now, is the debt burden. This debt burden is accentuated or exacerbated by the challenges around climate. Resources that countries on the continent have been borrowing, instead of those resources being deployed towards expanding infrastructure and you know, providing social goods to citizens, a lot of those resources are being used to mitigate the challenges around global climate change. And so it is important for the world to come together around providing a much more enabling lending framework, not just for Kenya, but for the entire continent that is in debt, in dire debt distress. And so this is a conversation that will feature in the bilateral conversation with President Ruto, but certainly on the sides as well. It is very likely that the President will also engage with the IMF. My name is Joel Chacha from K24 TV. Uh, President William Ruto will be visiting a country that is matured, uh, it is matured democ uh, of course, democratically. This comes at a time that the reports of the former President Uhuru Kenyatta being cash, uh, of course, intentionally appearing to be cash crunched despite allocations to his office. This, of course, paints the current president in bad light. Would you uh, I like to address that and perhaps clear the air on the same? I think Kenya is a very, is, is a well-known um, democratic state. It has institutions, including institutions touching on, on budgetary allocations. Um, the entire budgetary process takes a while. Citizens are consulted. They provide their input. Parliament is now taking charge of the process through the finance, the finance bill and the finance legislation. Um, and so we do not, from the standpoint of, of, of the Foreign Office, we do not see anything to warrant any concerns regarding Kenya's democratic credentials. Kenya trusts and believes in the role of its former leaders. Um, its offices are supported in accordance to the law. And as far as we are concerned, we have seen nothing that the government has done to diminish the role of that office. But I'll allow my, my brother Hussein to speak to that issue later on. Any other questions relevant to the visit? Yes. My name is Jeff Kiroi from K3. Ideally, the second in command is the person in charge. But there has been reports of strained relations between the two leaders. Perhaps you can clear there as well and tell us, is everything okay between the head of state and his deputy? Hussein will take that one. Any other question? Thank you, Dr. Korea. My name is Gordon Hussein from the Star newspaper. Uh, just mine is twofold. One is uh, regarding the, uh, the, the visit by the president to the U.S., uh, you have rightly indicated that we are undergoing that strain uh, uh, and uh, also we have been battered by climate change, the floods and the rest. Uh, 
could you indicate to the nation if the president is intending in his engagement with President Biden to uh, ask for some sort of help and support in terms of grant or aid or even government to government loaning? Uh, because we know uh, he's been quite a bit looking for money for, to help our country and to move forward. The second question regards the Kenyan who is in jail in Saudi Arabia, who is subject, has been subject to quite media attention or lately, and the family is distressed. Uh, what is the government thinking on this, and is, has there been some intervention to ensure that even if he's been uh, adjudged guilty in that other country, he's transferred to serve jail term in the country? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Certainly, President Ruto will be engaging, not just with President Biden, but with, the, with Congress and the Senate. And, and the whole idea behind these engagements really is to, to socialize the American policy constituency about some of the challenges um, that Kenya is facing, but also challenges that the continent is facing. But the President will not just talk challenges, he will also talk opportunities. This country has, and this continent has, immense opportunities. Opportunities that can aid in addressing some of the challenges that the world is facing. And so President Ruto will be seeking uh, a package around trade and around investment. That's really our focus. The, the, the belief by President Ruto is that through investment and through expansion of trade, is how we can build resiliency within our economies, rather than by way of aid and short-term you know, sort of solutions. And so real focus will be on trade, investment, um, you know, and accelerating uh, our economic uh, cooperation. Um, on the matter of um, Steve Munyaho, I think you are aware that we have been engaging at the State Department. Um, we have met with our colleagues in the embassy of Saudi Arabia, we've met with the family, we've met with um, the, 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 the embassy of Yemen from, um, I mean, whose citizen or whose national was, was the victim, you know, in, in, in this case. Um, and we are working together. It's a difficult case because the matter has already been adjudicated. It's taken a couple of years for it to be resolved, but we are confident that through diplomatic means and through further negotiation and engagement, we will be able to find a solution. Thank you very much. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, PS. Uh, I think there are two questions about asked. Jeff, I don't know. <laughs> My friend Jeff asked a question. I don't know if this is the appropriate place to ask uh, this question. I mean, you've heard what we've been talking about and what the PS has said and some of the questions that are being asked. And what the president, the janitor, the president has been working for the last, uh, since he assumed office, really, uh, on climate action, on the debt crisis, and this is the big stage. He's been at different forums uh, trying to address this, not only on behalf of Kenya, but on behalf of Africa. Uh, so this is the big stage. I would really want to trivialize it. I want us to stay focused on the state visit itself. Uh, but now that you ask anyway, uh, about uh, the Deputy President and the President. To my knowledge, there is no issue, uh, Jeff. And of course, uh, the Deputy President's office is an office with all the capabilities and competencies. Uh, if you want to ask any question or find out anything about the Deputy President, they have all the capabilities and you can uh, find uh, whatever information you need uh, there. There's a second question on the matter of the office of the retired President. Um, I think there are some issues that were raised uh, in the media, and those are the issues that were asked by my brother from K24, and also Jeff. The thing is, there's, a, there's an office complex in Nyari that has been used by a previous president, the, the, the late President Mwai Kipaki, and he occupied that office for nine years. Uh, it is very well known that the office is there, it is vacant, and President Uhuru Kenyatta can use that office as and when he deems uh, fit uh, to use it. As for the other matters about uh, budget, uh, there are channels and mechanisms to access uh, budget and provisions in the office of the fourth uh, president, and all those uh, have been provided for officially, for any official engagement. Okay. 
my name is Gatete Njoroge from Citizen TV, Hussein. My question is about the U.S. Uh, uh, trip and um, some of the things maybe that Kenya is, uh, is seeking to partner with the U.S. I don't know if we are also seeking, let's talk, we, when we go to Asia, we have seen the president talking about exporting labor. I don't know if that is uh, some of the, uh, the proposal maybe we'll be having to the U.S. government. In the 60s, we remember we had the airlift programs where we saw thousands of Kenyans going to the U.S. Um, to, and they were getting scholarships and they came back and served this country. Are those some of the opportunities that uh, the government will be expo exploring when they go to the United States? Thank you, Sain. Yes, Gatete. I mean, you know, introduce Gatete. There is, uh, of course, all this, all this and much more uh, on the table and will be discussed. As I said, this is just an itinerary, giving you a rundown of what will happen. As the president goes to the state visit, a lot more uh, will be announced. The early program is something that will be reflected upon. And yes, the announcements of, uh, uh, on, on, on uh, partnership between uh, Kenyan universities and their U.S. counterparts. And that will actually be announced uh, to that effect in as far as exchange programs are concerned. But I can also take it. Yeah. But I think just to mention that Kenya and the U.S. have been negotiating STIP, the Strategic Trade and Investment okay. Partnership. Um, this is um, an agreement that, that we are negotiating. It has about 11 chapters. And there is a whole chapter there on labor and labor migration. Um, and we're having a very robust conversation around how the U.S. can be able to open a window for Kenya, particularly under the H1 and H2 you know, visa, you know, visa framework. And so it will form part and parcel of, of our conversation. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Santini Sana. Thank you.